Hello and welcome to the Tab Touch preview for this week. We're halfway through round seven of the NBL season, and so far it's gone uninterrupted. We've got through a few games this weekend, and we've got a couple more to go now to close out round seven. That's why we're bringing you this special edition of the Tab Touch preview. Especially looking forward to both the Adelaide 36ers and the Perth Wildcats returning to NBL action after a very long break for both of them. So, as part of Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle, we're here with you this week. I'm Chris Pike, but the man that you do want to get his opinions of, the three-time NBL champion, the best power forward of his generation, gold medal winning Matty Knight. How do we find you in this first time we've spoken in 2022, Matty? You know, it's been a while, mate. Mm. Um, Haven't had, had much to talk, talk about, about, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you think of games that's beyond, the whole round gets cancelled. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, doing well, mate. Hopefully uh, it stays the way it's going. We'll get a couple more games in. Yeah, so so far this round's gone well. We've had oh, we've had five games going back to Thursday night up until Sunday, and that was as many games as we had over the entire previous three weeks. And it's it's been something that we've never seen before. I mean, what have you made of this whole situation of... Games being delayed, games being postponed, games being called off on the day of a game. I mean, it's been it's been a whole situation that we've never seen before. I mean, what have you made of everything that's sort of happened over the, the past month? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Um, obviously, last year, the teams probably thought it was a, a difficult season, but uh, I don't think a lot of teams probably imagined what it would be like this season. Mm. And um, as you said, games just getting cancelled. Day after day, it would be tough being a player. Um, you're preparing to play, and all of a sudden you're not playing. For a lot of teams, they can't even probably get on a practice court yeah. because they're in uh, isolation. So um, I imagine there's a lot of players ready ready to get out of isolation and uh, start playing some basketball. Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine what it would be like to be, I guess, in the middle of a season, but then all of a sudden, and you're preparing for a game. So you might be a day or two out from the game, and all of a sudden your whole team is sent into quarantine. You have to stay at home for at least a week to, to get the all clear that you don't have COVID or to get over COVID. You know, we've had a lot of players that have tested positive and have had to get over over COVID, and then you you might return to the court as a team for a couple of sessions, or you know you might not have many players at all to return to the court. We know in the Wildcats' case, there was a time there where they only had two players available in Tasmania to actually actually train. So, I mean... How would have you handled this whole situation as a player? I mean, how would have you, how would have you found it? Uh, it would have been very, a very difficult time for a lot of players. Um, probably more so for teams that are on the road, mm-hmm. like the Perth and the New Zealand, yep. because you're in a hotel mm-hmm. and yeah. there's literally a, four, a, a wall, four walls looking at you in a TV. Um, not a lot you can do, but if all those other teams are probably at home, you still got your apartment, your house, so you got more, more uh, area to get out. But um, oh, I reckon I would have struggled big time. Mm. Um, you just want to play basketball, but unfortunately you can't. And um, sitting in a hotel room, uh, I can't think of anything worse. It used to be bad enough. I mean, when we went to New Zealand, you had the day <laughs> prepared beforehand, yeah. and yeah. you're in the hotel room apart from training. So to do it for a fair p- amount of time, it would be difficult especially your, your mental well-being. Sure, absolutely. The other tough part is, especially for the teams that have now had three or four weeks where they haven't played, usually if you've got that amount of time, you would think you've been able to put a lot of time on the practice court, but a lot of these teams have had very, very little time together on the court to actually actually work on things. I mean, basically, if you're coming back to play now, so we saw it with Brisbane when they played their first game against New Zealand. They looked really rusty. We saw... Illawarra looked really rusty early on in that game against Sydney this past Thursday. We saw the South East Melbourne Phoenix look. Look, they were completely out of sorts in their game on Saturday against the Brisbane Bullets. I mean, it, it's almost like you're starting your preseason campaign, but you're in the middle of the season, and in some cases you're then playing a team that does have their groove about them. I mean, that that has to be a, a huge challenge. Yeah, no, it's going to be difficult. Um during the season, some coaches probably would like to have three weeks practice time, especially mm. if the season isn't going to plan. But you haven't even had that opportunity. No. Like you said, a lot of teams have probably got two to three guys that can actually probably leave the hotel room and go and train. So you can do all the Zoom meetings mm. and all the push-ups you want in the room, but it's not going to help you. You're not going to be in game shape. And um, you lose uh, 
soon as that team chemistry is filled up over pre-season, the start of the season, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it stops. Um, you're back where one. Yeah. And, um, yeah, as you said, Brisbane, their first game, looked like they hadn't played in weeks. Mm. South East Melbourne. Um, I think one team that's probably benefited is New Zealand. Yep, um, I agree. They're actually playing some really good basketball right now. I know they had COVID very early on in the season and it um, really affected them then, but probably having it early has helped them because yep. they've got all their guys back now. Um, and they're playing some pretty good basketball. And Brisbane, first game struggled, second game a lot better. Yep. So I think it's going to take game, uh, teams probably a couple games to get back into some rhythm. But yeah, you'd be hoping you don't have any more interruptions moving forward. Absolutely. Um, I reckon your biceps would have wouldn't have minded the push ups in the hotel room, Matty. What do, what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I'm sure the S and C guy for Wildcats would have found some interesting ways to keep it in shape. <laughs> Probably lifting the desk chairs or <laughs> on a bench press each other. But no, uh, never a fan of push up. No. Never a fan. Okay. No, I think all the shoulder surgeries kind of yeah, uh, oh, threw me off with that. You lived with Kevin Lynch for a while. Did you ever bench press him? Nah, man, he, he was a lightweight. <laughs> nah, it was fun times with Kev. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Do you still have that that drawing of the of the pair of you that you used to have on the wall in that house? Uh yeah, I've got it somewhere in the house. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, no, um, me and Kev really developed a strong relationship. Obviously, uh, moving together for the whole year, and no, each day we go and um, train together or whatnot. So it was good to have a, a teammate there. Now. We're here for the Tap Touch preview for this week, thanks to Tap Touch, obviously. But what we will do is have a look back on the games that we've seen so far in Round 7. And it's a nice segue into Kevin Lish and his Sydney Kings. So they played first up back on Thursday against the Illawarra Hawks. And, you know, both teams were playing their first game in a little while. I think the Kings, it was their first game in 18 days. And for the Hawks, it was, I think, their first game in 25 days. And to be fair, both teams prob- probably looked like that for a lot of the game. But the Hawks got going in the... In the fourth quarter, Sam Froling, career best night from him, 27 points, 10 rebounds, and Tyler Harvey shot the, shot the ball incredibly, 6 or 7 from 3. They were probably the difference in the end. Um, what did you make of this one as both teams returned to action? You know, as you said, it wasn't pretty basketball to mm. start with. That's a big break to have in between your last game, yeah. uh, three weeks and nearly four weeks. So um, you could definitely tell, but... Um, yeah, Sam Froling, uh, he's really come along in leaps and bounds. Yeah. He had a great season last year, but he's taken another step forward. And um, he'd be in one of Illawarra's probably top three players. Um, Absolutely, yeah. He'd probably be one of the top three most important players too with Tyler Harvey and, and Reese. So yep. um, he's become a, a three-headed monster down in Illawarra. But um, no, it's good to see him playing well. Yeah, I'm sure Illawarra would have been glad to get a win, especially after having 25 days off mm. in between games. Unfortunately for the Kings, they got both their imports back, but RJ Hunter lasted less than a minute before he hurt his knee, and now he's done for, done for the season. And you would probably have some good insight into this. He he wasn't happy with some of the, the heckling that he copped for, over the fence from the fans there in Wollongong once he went down hurt. Is that the most hostile environment you played in, that, that crowd there in, in Wollongong as a visiting player? Yeah, no, um, there was a few years there. <laughs> Some of the language you'd hear was quite interesting. Um, yep. <laughs> you'd turn around and uh, you'd just be like, wow, never heard that before. But um, <laughs> obviously they've paid their money, so they're entitled mm. to say what they want. But uh, sometimes some fans can take it a little bit too far. Um, in their defence, they probably didn't know it was a, a serious injury. But if you see some a, a guy or a player go down, you've, you've got to... Um, you got to show respect. Yeah. Um, yeah, even if it was a, a mild injury, um, you still show respect. You know, um, they're passionate. Like the small fans they do have down there, they're passionate. Mm. Um, it was always a tough place to play, especially uh, when we had the finals and that. But, yeah. um, you know, it's unfortunate for, for RJ Hunter to season any injury. It was. Never what you want to see any player experience. Probably the break didn't help either. Mm. You just never know, and hope that that's not the first of many due to teams not being able to train. Well, that is a, a great concern, obviously, with guys now coming back after long breaks and sometimes on pretty limited preparation. We hope that we don't see too many guys going down down hurt as well. Um, so we then got to Friday night. 
New Zealand Breakers playing a home game in Tasmania was interesting against Melbourne. It's their kind of home away from home now, but unfortunately no fans were allowed in the building, which kind of kills the atmosphere a little bit, even watching watching from afar. But Melbourne did enough to win this game. It probably wasn't their greatest performance, but they, they did enough to keep their winning streak going, 89-78. to, to 78. You know, New Zealand, um, they play right, right in the game yep. right up to the end. I think Melbourne's experience got them over the line, but I'm sure for both teams it probably felt like a pre-season game. Probably haven't played much basketball then. You come out and play in front of an empty stadium. Yep. It's tough to generate that. Intensity, you, you love crowds, the atmosphere, and to have a, a 5,000 seat stadium empty, mm. it's not going to be much of an atmosphere. And it can be tough to get up and uh, motivate at times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then on Saturday, I think we saw the biggest example of what, what this COVID break can do to a team. So the Phoenix hadn't played played in a month and to be honest they looked like they looked like a team not only that hadn't played for a month that hadn't been able to spend any time on the on the court together and, and I think they were 31 points down at one point in the first half they made it look a little bit more respectable in the second half with the bullets ending ending up winning 100 to 84 but to be honest it looked like a, a hell of a mismatch with the bullets having had a game under their belts already and and the phoenix just didn't look like they were ready to be honest no i think that that's going to be uh, the way it is for a all these teams coming out for their first game. Like I said, you can do all the Zoom meetings and all that you want, but until you actually step out in court, it's not going to be a replicated game situation. And obviously, uh, Brisbane, they got the, the rust off earlier in the week. Mm. And um, I'm sure they learn a lot from that game and come out. And uh, yeah, South East probably didn't expect the, that type of result, but... Um, yeah, no, uh, Robert Franks, he's, uh, mm. he'd have to go up there for MVP consideration, oh, what he's doing up there. He came in trying to replace uh, Vic Law, yeah. and um, tell you what, putting out similar numbers, and he's got that Brisbane team, uh, even though they've split the week so far, they're playing some pretty good basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's that third starter they need, along with Patterson and Sobey, and, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's been fantastic. I completely agree. Um, we had two games on Sunday, two fascinating games. I... I can't wait to get your thoughts on on this this first one. Melbourne beat the Elora Hawks in the end, eighty eight to eighty four. But it was all about Dally. Matthew Delavadova had the not had the game of his life, and I think he would shot three of eighteen. I think it was from three coming into this game. He came out and hit his first five from beyond the arc in the game. Seven of his first eight ended up with thirty three points, eight assists. Um, it was a hell of a shooting performance from a guy who. Basically, couldn't couldn't make a shot in the first six games of the season. What what did you think? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Actually, I thought with my brother-in-law before that game, we were talking about how Delhi wasn't much of a scorer in the NBA, <laughs> yep. and how he made it such an NBA career. And then you look, he's got thirty-three points on a high clip shooting percentage. Yeah. But there was games in the NBA where he shot the ball really well. And I tell you what, if he produces similar nights like that, well, then the rest of the league's in trouble. He's got. Shooters all over the court. You got big guys, Melbourne. They're purring right now. And yeah. um, I'll tell you what, if they jumped on uh, what they're playing uh, a couple of weeks ago, you'd be laughing right Absolutely. now. They, I think they were fourth favourite last time we spoke, didn't weren't they? Yeah. So if they uh, stay injury free, uh, they're going to be tough to beat. They've got uh, weapons all over the court. Big guys getting it done inside. Um, yeah, but no, nah, it was fantastic to see Delhi come out and have a game like that. Obviously, he probably didn't have a start to the season. Is hoping for, but um, it's always going to take time to adjust. He hasn't played a lot of basketball in the last couple of years, no, he so. Hasn't, yeah. um, and I think we forget before to... that he was basically a forty percent three point shooter in the NBA most of his career. Yeah, exactly. So he can, he can shoot, mm. but obviously it's not what he's known for. But I'll tell you what, he's probably put a lot of teams on notice now oh, that absolutely. they're going to have to respect him. Yep. The second game on Sunday was was fascinating, probably for all the wrong reasons if you're a Sydney Kings fan. Um, they controlled this game against the Breakers. They were still 10 points up with just over five minutes to go. Um, they scored one more point the rest of the game. The Breakers went on an 18-1 and run to finish the game. They ended up winning 82-75. to As good as the Breakers were, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit, that's a hell of a choke, isn't it, from the Kings? Yeah, no, if you're up by 10 with five, five minutes left in the in the fourth quarter and you're at home, you don't lose those games, mm. especially if you want to be a, a playoff team and that's what Sydney want. Um, you yeah, know, that's unacceptable to go eight, give up an 
one to finish the game. Obviously, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, film work done after that. But um, full credit to New Zealand. I was they hadn't had a good start to the season, but um, it shows you the fight they've got. Um, obviously, you go down just to Melbourne a couple of nights before, then down ten mm. with five minutes to go. Some teams probably throw in the towel, like, yep. oh well, that's another loss for us. But no, it was um, it's Eva. The, the guard, he, was yeah, he was fantastic. Obviously, he came in with high rep, reps and he, he's living up to it right now. So, see what, if New Zealand continue to play that way, they're going to cause some um, trouble for some teams and they could be pushing for that third or fourth spot. I, I agree. I think they've got a very good roster now that everyone's up and going and they also haven't, as you touched on before, they haven't had the interruption that a lot of teams have had. They seem to have got their COVID break out of the way now. So I think I think you're right. We'll get to them a, a bit more once we get to their game for on Wednesday night as well. It's been a fascinating round so far, Maddie. So we've got a we've got a break on Monday night and now we're back into it Tuesday night. This is a, a fascinating game. Thanks to Tab Touch, of course, we're here on the Tab Touch preview. So head to tabtouch.com.au to, to jump on board and, and hopefully Maddie can help you find a winner. This is the most probably delayed game in the history of the NBL, I think. <laughs> Adelaide, the Adelaide 36ers and the Perth Wildcats. I think this is the, the fourth time they've tried to play it. Right now, it's still scheduled to, to go ahead Tuesday night at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. So let's hope it hope it happens. But it's going to be fascinating because both teams haven't played for a long time. But last time Adelaide played was December 18 up in Cairns when they lost by 26 points and they put in the worst performance I think that they could have could have possibly done. They they couldn't have been any worse that night. But the Wildcats also now haven't played since New Year's Eve when they lost it when they they won up in Cairns. Sorry, but that was a, a decimated Taipans team that they beat. So, for so many reasons, this is a fascinating game. We don't know who's going to be out there for each team. We don't know how anyone's health is. We don't know how they're going to be looking. It's really a, it's a tough question to ask you, Matty. But what do you think we're going to see? Uh, one thing I know, it's not going to be uh, <laughs> exciting TV, <laughs> exciting <laughs> viewing. That's for sure. <laughs> Imagine the first half; it could be a lot of turnovers. Mm. Um, trying to get rid of that rust, but um, yeah, no, it's Adelaide. That's a long time not to play a basketball game, and mm-hmm. after the results they've been putting up, that's probably the last thing they wanted. Yep, absolutely, <laughs> to have such yeah. a massive break. You know, I I, I tip them to be a playoff team, and yep. they've probably been one of the biggest disappointments this year. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, down the bottom half, of, bottom of the ladder, really. So. Well, both these teams have got new coaches as well. They're trying to implement yep. new systems and having such a big break, it's not going to help. Um, Could come down to individual players and, and it comes down to that. Perth, are, they've got the talent in Bryce and uh, Vic Law. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to be exciting viewing, but uh, both teams will be uh, excited to get back out on the court. And I think uh, Perth, just because of Bryce Cotton, will probably get a win. I don't disagree, but I also don't mind the odds thanks to Tab Touch. Right now, the 36ers are 295 for this game. The Ooh, Wildcats, wow. Wildcats are 140, so I I wouldn't be surprised yeah, if both wins, to... but gee, I, I like yeah. that, 295. Tell you what, if you yeah, try and make a, a cheeky little bet, you'd mm. probably jump on those odds. Probably the break might have got Adelaide a bit more fired up. It's a lot of time to stew on the last game. Um, obviously, a 26-point loss to Cairns, yep. and we've had a month to really sit back and watch it. Um, yeah, You'd be, uh, as an Adelaide fan, you'd be disappointed if they come out and show no fight. Perth have had, really had no chance to train and bring this to a few guys out with COVID. So if they can't take care of this, then, um, yeah, obviously Sunday back is a massive in for them. That's someone to guard Bryce. But, um, yeah, a lot of pressure on Adelaide. Um, obviously winning the pre-season tournament and then you probably haven't had the results you've wanted to start the season. And I'm sure CJ's got the boys ready to go. It's a funny thing to say because I think I think they're only playing their fourth or fifth game of the season, but in some ways I think it's a must-win game for Adelaide. At least they have to play well because the last time they played they were so horrible. They've now had four weeks off in between. They have to come out and show something, especially at home. Exactly. You, you, you want to keep those Adelaide fans coming back. Yeah. That's a great atmosphere. Now, they get behind them, but if they you, can turn you, on you drop a game too. like... Exactly. <laughs> if you drop this game, I wouldn't be surprised if 
they do turn their back on them because mm. they're passionate fans and they love their basketball and they, they want to see their team compete. And in a lot of games this year, they haven't competed. No, they haven't. And I think we, we spoke on, on our Hoops Evans Basketball Hustle show to Bevo a couple of weeks ago and he said it's the, the worst performance by a team that he's ever seen in terms of just having no effort at all. He said he's never seen a performance worse than that. So it's going to be fascinating how they how they come out now on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday night, Matty, before we f- wrap things up, the informed New Zealand Breakers, who they've won two of their last three games, and in the game they lost in between, they, they, they played pretty well against Melbourne, to be honest. So they're, they're up and going. They're playing against the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, who now have had their COVID interruptions as well. They haven't played, I think it was... I think it was New was it New Year's Day. I think their last game was. So they've had, yeah, a, they've had they a couple of weeks off. Yeah. So it's in Tasmania. Uh, technically, I think they're going to call it a Breakers home game, but it's on the Jack Jumpers home floor. So take that for what <laughs> take that for what you will. Tab Touch has the Breakers one sixty five. The Jack Jumpers two twenty three. What do you think, Matty? Um, I'm tipping New Zealand in this one. I think um, they've had the luxury of playing which is their fourth game, so they've had time. To get all the rust out and uh, get some uh, momentum back on court, and like you said, they're unlucky to go down to Melbourne, so they could have easily been three and three to start the new part of the season. Yep. So, and Tassie, they they haven't been impressive this year. Um, their imports really haven't lit the uh, well on fire, especially to be Josh, Josh. Well, two of them, Josh Majet yeah. and also Mikhail McIntosh, are, have really struggled. Yeah, well, Majet was meant to be uh, an absolute star according to. Mm. The coaching yep. staff down there, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the first to go. Or well, not so, but well, if he, if he doesn't start ta- producing. Especially if he keeps taking those bad three-point shots. It's, it's one thing to take shots, but he's taking horrible shots. Yeah, no. If you try and force the issue, then it's, there's something up. And um, I don't know, the pressure got to him so yeah. far that he's yeah. had these huge raps. But um, he needs to find other ways to get involved in the game. But... Um, yeah, uh, just uh, Tassie. I'm not sold on. I love I love the Tassie team, but I wish they'd gone in a different direction in terms of recruiting. But um, you know, I think New Zealand are, they're playing some good basketball, and I imagine Steve is going to have enough of another big game. Yep, I wouldn't be surprised if Yanni Wetzel dominates too. We haven't seen much from Will Magne so far, and I could imagine Yanni Wetzel having a having a big yeah, game. game Magne. Magnate's another one. He obviously had that one good year with Brisbane and a huge raps in the NBA, but uh, that means nothing if you're not producing. Everyone cares mm-hmm. about what you're doing now, and uh, sure. right now he's not He's not doing it. He was over here end of last year, and uh, he didn't produce. Thought Taz would be a fresh start, and it um, hasn't happened yet. So uh, there's a few boys down in Taz that really need to start playing basketball. Otherwise, it could be a long season for Taz, and I know their fans, they want to get behind and cheer, but um, they want to see them do it, have some on-court success as well. Speaking of that, Matty, teams can bring in a COVID replacement player if they need to right now. If Mark Radford and his and his team down in Tassie give you a call, is there any chance they can convince you to pull on the singlet? Oh, mate, I'd love to pull on the singlet, <laughs> but rat, rat knows what shape I'm in right now. <laughs> There'd be more chances of Rat pulling on a singlet than me right now, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a, an interesting uh, idea they've come up with, obviously trying to follow the NBA mm. replacement pod. But, um, yeah, I just be interesting to see how it works. There's some guys on fringe level NBA and it could be an opportunity for them to come in and make a name for themselves or it could hurt their chances. So it'll be interesting to see what the NBA, how it works. From the team that we've got here on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle, though, so if we're talking... You're talking yourself. We're talking Sean Redditch, Damian Martin, Alex Loudon, Adam Gibson. I don't think we can count Rob Beveridge. Um, who would be more? Who would be the one most likely? Is it Gibbo, or would you throw someone else in there? Oh, you'd have to say Gibbo, or Sean. <laughs> yeah, well, Sean, Sean, Sean probably could jump on a court and not look out of place, couldn't he? No, yeah, and Sean, you'd never know what you'd get with Sean <laughs> Ellis. You know. Gibbo, to be fair, should still be on a roster right now. I think. Uh, yep. He, he's a lot more talent. He brings more than some guys on some roster. So I'm sure he'd be jumping at a chance to get the opportunity. But uh, yeah, I think me and Dame are well past our uh, our chance of making a comeback. <laughs> I, I saw Damo trying to run a couple of weeks ago. He he cannot run. He phys- his body physically cannot run anymore. That's how that's how banged up his yeah, body yeah. is. 
mate. He was like that the last six years in India. <laughs> he was on all sorts of drugs to get through <laughs> painkillers. Uh, but, um, you yeah, know, I think uh, oh, probably uh, Al Loughton, he's played up in Cairns in the off season, he, he, he I was, think. He so. was, he did. He led, led his team to the to the grand final. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Cairns was sure they'd come knocking for, and he'd probably jump at the opportunity because I know that he's a, he loves Cairns yep. and he loves the Titans. So uh, I'm sure if they're sure, I'm sure he'd be getting a knock on the door. That's a, that's a good call. That's a that's a great call. And I think we're actually catching up with Lowes on on the the show this week. So we might we might actually put that question to him and see what he what he what he thinks, Matty. But it's been fun catching up again, Matty. Good to see, good to get your insights. We look forward to seeing how these next couple of days unfold, and we'll catch up again next week for our Tap Touch preview and have a look at at round eight. But I'm going to sign off and and thank you, Matty, for joining us and. And let you finish with what are you most looking forward to in this Adelaide Perth game? Just, uh, just to see uh, both teams back out in court, and uh, hopefully Adelaide have discovered some heart in this break and come out and actually show some emotion and just get after it and play basketball like they did in the preseason.